Hi, I'm very honored to share with you uh, my research so far, advised by Professor Jason Kong at UCLA. Uh, we are exploring layout synthesis for quantum computing, gap analysis, and optimal solution. So I'll first give an overview of a representative flow of quantum computing. We start with applications. It can be in chemistry or optimization or machine learning, cryptography. The first step is quantum algorithm design. And the result is some form of linear algebra where the quantum states are vectors and the operations are matrices. And then we go through logic synthesis. So the result is a sequence of gates supported by the architecture because uh, we cannot just throw some random gates to our hardware. And then we go through layout synthesis the result of which is the space-time coordinates of all gates. So I will explain this later on. Uh, and then we go through control signal generation. And the result is waveforms of control signals. And finally, we uh, go to the fundamental physics, whether it's superconductor or trapped ion, silicon or optics. So we think that logic synthesis, layout synthesis, and control signal generation are the three processes that are uh, architecture concern. So we have this uh, research project, architecture and design automation for quantum computing. So we will look at, take a closer look at the LSQC problem. So this is uh, what an input quantum program looks like. So it's just a, like an assembler codes in classical computation uh, with operators and operands. Uh, sometimes we also represent a quantum program with this circuit diagram. So here each wire is a qubit and uh, the gates are on those wires. Generally the time flows from left to right, but um, we, we do not uh, restrict that uh, vertical line gates are simultaneous. So here we are uh, thinking in a really abstract level to implement this quantum circuit or quantum program, we first have to map the logic qubits to the physical qubits. And then uh, single qubit gates are easy to handle. Basically in uh, current hardware, we can uh, always implement them. But for two qubit gates, like CNOT gates here, uh, there's some more concern. For these specific gates, uh, it acts on a pair of adjacent qubits on this uh, coupl coupling graph of the device, so it's okay. However, for this case, it's on Q3 and Q0, and they are non-adjacent. So we have to swap them with a specific gate called swap gate. And then they are adjacent, so we can uh, implement that CNOT gate. So formally, the input to the LSQC problem is quantum circuit program and the coupling graph. And the output is space-time coordinates of all the gates, including the inserted swaps. So here I annotated on this circuit diagram. Uh, on the bottom, we have time coordinates. So now vertical alignment means, some, uh, means real time. And uh, I annotated the space coordinates uh, on each wire, uh, meaning the physical qubit that it mapped to. And in the box, uh, there are three CNOT gates consisting of a swap, swap gate uh, that we inserted. There can be multiple objectives to this problem. It can be uh, the result depth or additional swap count or fidelity. And we have some constraints. So we assume that all gates must be executed. So we, which means that uh, all sorts of gate cancellation or optimization are done beforehand. Uh, and also we respect the dependencies because we cannot change arbitrarily the, the order between these gates. So the two works that I'm presenting today uh, are all about layout synthesis. The first work, Queco, is quantum mapping examples with non-optimal. The intuition here is that we want to measure how are the current tools doing compared to theoretical optimum? So why is this important? Um, 
because we want to probe how how further ahead can we improve these tools. Uh, previously, they, um, we can only uh, compare with, within the tools. So we want to know uh, their performance compared to the theoretical optimum. And that is pretty hard because we actually pr proved that uh, the LSQC problem is NP complete in general. So the task is to construct a specific set of benchmarks that we know the optimal and uh, they are also non-trivial. Then we can evaluate the tools with them. So after we uh, derived those results, we went on to improve the tools ourselves. Uh, and our second work is OLSQ, Optimal Layout Synthesis for Quantum Computing. So we, fo uh, we are focusing on optimal approaches, uh, not heuristic ones. And we also have uh, make some relaxations and uh, improve the efficiency. So there are several parameters that we can specify in the construction of critical examples. Uh, we can specify the devices. So we pick some leading devices uh, and we can specify the depths. We treat uh, below 45 as near term feasible because that's what Google used uh, in the quantum supremacy experiment. And we use 100 to 900 as scalability study. We also have a parameter called gate density we have two profiles, one for top gate, which is commonly used, and one for a quantum supremacy experiment. We evaluate several leading tools, CERC uh, from Google, Kiski from IBM, and TCAD. Uh, we have a reference here, but it's also uh, uh, from a company called Cambridge Quantum Computing. And uh, we have a leading academic tool back then. The results are, uh, actually expected and uh, the, optimum gaps, the optimum gaps are quite large. So here in the figures, the horizontal axis is, is the optimal depth and the, and the vertical axis is the depth ratio, which is the resulting depth returned from these tools divided by the optimal depth. As you can see, even on some uh, near-term feasible circuits, uh, the depth ratio can run as high as 40x. And here are the results for a scalability study. The optimal gaps are still quite large. So Quico certainly encouraged us to develop some uh, tools ourselves and uh, others, like uh, this work from uh, this Austrian university. So this is uh, where the leading academic work we cited came from. And also researchers in Cambridge and University of British Columbia, and we expect, expected more. The solution space of LSQC problem is quite large, as we say, it's MPC. Um, so in the previous leading op optimal approach, there are two to the TMN uh, variables for mapping. So it stands for at each of the T time steps, is one of the M logic qubits mapped to one of the N possible physical qubits. We use a more efficient encoding in OLSQ, so we move the N down from the, the exponential. So here the, the vertical axis logarithm and the, the horizontal axis is just N. And um, the previous leading work, uh, the blue triangles, as we can see, is ex exponential and uh, our results are not. So we have a set of variables uh, in OLSQ and they are optimal in a stronger sense. So we can um, extract the dependency of the quantum program. Uh, this is for the previous example. So the previous leading work add these additional dependencies which are not necessary. So we are optimal in a stronger sense because we explore a larger solution space. And we relax this uh, OLSQ formalization uh, because we notice that only when the mapping changes uh, that the mapping variables are, are changed. So we uh, relax from the number of uh, total time step to the number of gate blocks or between transitions and uh, achieve 400x speed up. 
So uh, here are some results compared to uh, leading heuristic approaches like TCAT. We reduce the uh, additional swap gates by a lot, and we can uh, also optimize fidelity compared to this leading heuristic work. And finally, we have some uh, customized compilation for the QLA circuits uh, because some of those dependencies are uh, not necessary. So we remove some of the dependencies and then we uh, achieve uh, even further uh, reduction in swap count and depths. So these are our two works and some others. Thank you. I'm happy to take some questions. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Okay, so do we have any questions? Uh, you can use the chat box or you can use the, the raised hand feature and I will unmute you. I, I have one um, sort of general question, I guess, uh, that, that maybe, maybe you could comment on. Um, I know that I've, I've heard a lot about work that is going on to try and uh, create more abstraction in, in uh, quantum programming so that it would someday get closer to what most conventional or classical programmers are used to. So they don't need to do quite as much sort of machine yeah. level programming. Um, how do you see, it, it, has there been any significant progress uh, towards that end? Is there, I know there's some work on compilers and so forth, but uh, is that something that, that, uh, that, that you or anyone uh, uh, there at UCLA has been looking at? Um, I think currently we are still focusing on more infra infrastructure level uh, because as you can see uh, that in the example that I give here, uh, the input quantum program uh, resembles just like assembler codes. So right. that's like very, uh, very low level in the classical computing stack. Right. Yeah. Um, and also like so, some people even break the abstraction layers to the pulses to, uh, to boost the performance of quantum hardware because um, the quantum hardware is still uh, not as good as we expected. Right. That's actually a, a very good point. I was going to mention that, that when, I, when I've heard that from people, and it's usually people coming from the classical computing world, obviously, um, that you know, sort of complain that they, because they're not used to having to do this, this low level programming. Um, but the fact that the, the hardware is still so noisy and each circuit, as you've probably seen, is, is very different even on the same platform uh, from each other. So that I think the right, right now, this is the only practical way to, to make some progress in the very beginning is to, to be able to to actually um, understand on a hardware level um, noise sources, for example, and so forth, in order to be able to write algorithms that would uh, that would give you any useful results. So I, I think, right, you know, it, it's certainly uh, too early, I believe, to 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 really think of, uh, seriously about uh, trying to to create more abstraction. Um, yeah, I mean, it's also important to uh, make a distinction uh, about like what sort of computation that quantum is good for. Right. So a lot of the classic, uh, for example, I think some people have a research on uh, like doing multiplications with quantum computers and classical computers. So even with all, all sorts of fancy error correction and all that, uh, quantum computer is just not really good for doing multiplications. Right. Yeah, so yeah, it's uh, actually a very fundamental problem that we, we need to uh, clarify moving forward. Okay.